Hello everyone, this is Damon with PixNub Software. In this video, I'm going to be discussing a new feature for sports photo automation version 9.1, and that is the CSV or TSV starter data. What this does is allows you to very quickly and accurately create a startup data file to use with sports photo automation. It's going to automatically put in all of the image names in the first column, and it's going to automatically fill out all of the headers for your specific PSD. And then it will fill in the resize modes that you select for your text layers. It's not going to put the data in. I don't have a way right now to magically know which data from whatever data set you have belongs with which file name. So this is something you'll have to fill out. However, this will still ensure that you have your CSV filled out correctly. Now I do have something in the works as a joint venture with a, another lab to um, be able to automatically fill the data out, but that's something I'll discuss later when that's ready. But for right now, I think this should help out a lot because this is, I think, the number one source of confusion for people with sports photo automation. So the first thing you need to make sure you you do is have your PSDs set up correctly. And for the text layers, and these top 15 items are your text layers. These are the text layer names that you have to work with with sports photo, auto, photo automation for automatic text replacement. So if you want to use the auto text replacement, your layers in your PSD have to be these names. And it's all caps and no spaces. So in your file, you need to make sure that these names are filled out exactly like that. So if you purchase a template and the designer called it team name with a space and it's not all caps, that is not going to work. You're going to need to rename your name to all caps, no spaces, so the name matches exactly what it says in here. Also, your layers have to be set up as point text. So if you right click in this empty space here in the layer, if it says convert to paragraph text, the layer is already in point text mode. However, if it says convert to point text, then it's in paragraph text mode and it's not going to work. So it has to be point text. Once all of your layer names are correct, you can go into the um, setup PSD and click this convert SPA text to point. And that's going to go through and find any layers that have the correct layer names that are the SPA designated layer names, and it will convert those to point text for you. So it's a one-click operation to do that, but you need to first make sure all of your layer names are named correctly. So once you know your PSD is set up and you've also got in um, your SPA player and or team set up, layers, but once that's all set up, then you can make, or then you can go in and um, start your CSV. So in this case, there's four text layers. So we've got position, number, team name, and league name. Then we've got our resize columns. So this will put in the um, column for the text layer itself. And then resizing is optional. And so for position, we'll use XM number, we're not going to use any resizing, team name will use X, and re league name will use XM. And if you want to know what these different resizing options do, or anything else in the CSV or TSV data for that matter, you can go to this button here, and that's going to open up the documentation for the data file. And I suggest going through this because this contains all of the information that you need and a lot of people ask questions about this, but I don't think a lot of people actually go and read this document. And most of the questions that people ask are actually inside of this document. So I highly recommend going through that document. And so for this file, it's a memory mate. So we'll select team file. And these are the additional headers that you can put any of the headers that you want to use. You'll just select here and then create CSV. So once this pops up, you just select the folder that contains your player files, and that's how it will know which file names to put in the um, data file here. So I'll select this folder, and that's it. It's created the data file for us. 
So I've got two data files here, and that's because I already created one that I showed you at the start of the video. And when I just click to create a new one, it made a new one with a dash two. So if there's already one there, it's going to make um, an additional file. It's not going to overwrite your previous, and it's just going to add an extension. So when you open it, you need to make sure that it's using the correct separator or delimiter, whatever your program calls it. Um, so in this case, comma. Then you see that opens up correctly there. Now I'm going to create a TSV so I can show you the difference here. Put it in the same folder. Now a TSV is does have the same data as your CSV, but what TSV stands for is tab separated value, where CSV is comma separated value. Now if we open these up with a plain text editor, we can see the separators or delimiters, whatever you want to call them, which will be hidden in your spreadsheet program. So a CSV, it's got commas to separate each column of data, which you don't see when you're looking at it in your spreadsheet. These are hidden characters. Now the tab separated value doesn't have commas. It uses tabs to separate your columns. So if you use a TSV file with tabs for your separators, that will work for any data file. However, if you use CSV, you have to be careful that your data file does not have commas in it. And that can be your image names or anything that you're going to put into your data. So for example, I've got a folder here that's got file names. And I see this um, it's somewhat common I've seen where people will use last name comma first name as the name of their file. If you have this, in order for SPA to run correctly, you must use a TSV. So in this case, you create a TSV and select that folder. If I open this in Notepad, this is showing me the hidden characters. So you can see we're using tabs to separate the columns. And then the only commas we have now are in the file name itself. So if we open that in our spreadsheet program, we just need to make sure that it opens with tab delimiters and not comma. So in this case, it's defaulting to tab, but in the case it doesn't, and if you try to open this with comma, or if it just defaults and does it for you, if you see something like this when it opens a TSV file, that's because your spreadsheet program is trying to separate the columns by commas and not by tabs. So if that happens, you'll see all of your headers in the first column. In the case where we had file names separated by commas, it's separating that into two columns. So that's for sure not what we want. So if I open this again and make sure that I am have tabs selected, now it's opening that correctly. And it depends on your spreadsheet program. Most of them will automatically recognize a .tsv and default the tab. But just be aware if you see something not importing right, that's why. Also, if it's not the file names that have commas, even if some of your data is going to have columns or, or commas, say for instance, you're putting in the information for your city, like Boise, comma, Idaho. If you have a column that you know is going to have data with commas in it, you must use a TSV in that situation too. So anyway, it's pretty simple. This is actually really self-explanatory. Once you use this once or twice, um, you'll get the hang of it. It's got um, check boxes for all of the different headers that are available in Sports Photo Automation. So you just select what you need. Hit create data file and you'll get your data file ready to fill in your data with the image names from that folder. Now, again, if you have any questions about how anything in the data files work, do make sure to go to this link because 
I think that most people ask questions before they read through this information. So this does show you everything you need to know and it will tell you how all of the different scaling modes work, how to set up um, logo images or how to run um, multiplayer images. I got that somewhere in here too. Anyway, it's somewhere in here. So just be sure to um, um, read through this documentation. Anyways, I hope this makes it easier for you to create your data files because this will ensure that you get that correctly. Thanks for watching.